Now, moving to some more things that people can argue about. In this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer provided some further insight into the financial terms being discussed in the current AEW and WBD TV rights renewal negotiations, ones that Meltzer reports will make the company profitable if they can get them. Meltzer wrote that the per-year figures are being discussed. Excuse me. Meltzer wrote that the per year figures being discussed, quote, are said to be considerably more than the estimated one hundred and ten million dollars per year or slightly more that would in theory take the company into profitable range. There is talk of figures being between 50 percent above and as much as nearly double the current number number already said to be on the table. The latter figure in particular would open up the potential tens of millions more annually for talent acquisitions and other expansions in the budget. End quote. Both sides are still negotiating as of now. In January of 2020, AEW's existing deal with WBD was extended for four years at $175 million total, which included the addition of Rampage. That's why Tony Khan, whenever he says, am I open to doing more shows? Am I open to doing more hours a week? Yeah, if you're paying me to do them. There's a law of diminishing returns. I think we've seen that when it comes to Rampage already. WBD later picked up a one-year extension that will take the relationship through the end of this year. It is assumed that AEW got more money with the addition of Collision last June. Let's hope so. Actually, it doesn't, who cares about who hopes so? As long as Tony Khan is happy with the money that he got or whatever they gave him, maybe it was some magic beans or something like that, I would have held out for cash for another two-hour show. But it's unknown how much they got if they did get any money. The new TV rights negotiations include streaming rights, as Brian talked about earlier on this week, which are currently not available domestically. However, Meltzer stated that the talks are not serious when it comes to an outright purchase of pay-per-view distribution rights like WWE and Peacock with their PLEs or that UFC has with ESPN. If I was AEW, I think I'd be a little leery of that anyway. I mean, and we're going to get to some pay-per-view numbers in a moment, but you're making $50 a pop. And if WBD already has ownership, which they are reported, rumored to have in AEW, but whether they do or not, you're already getting money from them. To me, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. If they're not going to push that issue, I would be glad I would be glad to have my pay-per-views to be able to distribute and take in 100% of that money. Now, once those shows happen, I do want a carriage deal with WBD that maybe, you know, gets the back catalog of everything up on Max. I think that would be great. But when it comes to the pay-per-views themselves, eh, I don't know. I, I, I like the idea of being able to take all of that money. Earlier on this week, Puck's... Matt Belloni or Bell, okay, I'm not sure how to say his name. I'm going to turn into Brian from earlier on this week, but uh, the Puck newsletter reported that AEW had Tony Khan was disappointed with WBD's initial offer, a statement that AEW denied on the same day. Now, those pay-per-view numbers I was talking about from last Sunday's AEW Double or Nothing, we have some preliminary numbers in, according to Dave Meltzer, who reports that the total estimated buys are in the 133,000 range. I don't care how bad the TV is for AEW. You can set your watch to it. They're going to do between 120 and like 150,000 every single month. And some of that may atrophy a little bit as they continue to put shows on. But I don't know how much. It's not going to be enough where they probably should run shows 12 a year at the very least. Sorry about your wallets, kids. But we'll get in more of this and some other stuff when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Big Boss Man Brian Alvarez will be back with me on Monday. Jim Valley will be here with you tomorrow, Saturdays. 1 p.m. Eastern Time, Andrew Zarian, Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. 
I was saying before the break, Dave Meltzer reported in the uh, newest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, 133,000. That's what they're looking at about right now. He notes the reporting on numbers is a little slow due to Memorial Day weekend. He stated that as of now, TV buys were up 9.5% from April's Dynasty pay-per-view with the streaming numbers in the U.S. way up and about the same internationally, uh, adding that the TV numbers are way down. So the people ordering through traditional means just falls even further, but they are making that up when it comes to internet buys and uh, uh other ways to get the show this this time around you could get it through youtube you could get it through youtube tv i believe you, you could order it directly through there you could order it a uh, just a multitude of ways so a lot of people did not take the s traditional option this time around if the and you know and that a lot of that may also have to do with the fact that some of us were ordering through traditional tv means because the br app just sucks so bad that that was the really the entire reason why I would actually go through and order it through traditional means. But if the show ends in that range, Dave notes, it will be down from last year, which did about 140000 or so. Last year's show did not have Dynasty the month prior, though. So as I mentioned before the break, we're going to continue to see AEW ad pay-per-views. And until otherwise stated, noted, shown, they're going to do well, regardless of what the build is, regardless of what you think individually, personally, subjectively about anything that AEW does when it comes to the pay-per-views, which usually artistically deliver, again, subjective, but there is usually enough on a five-hour show to wet enough people's tastes and satisfy them where it is worth your money, whether you like everything or not. Also noted... Uh, by Dave in the newsletter that the gate at the MGM Grand Garden Arena was just under 800000 on 7500 paid, 9000 total. That is down from last year's show at the T-Mobile Arena in the same city, which had a gate nearing 900000 based on 9000 paid, 10500 total. As far as what takes place in the ring for AEW, everything is on the magic of videotape. AEW Rampage is tonight on TNT with matches taped on Wednesday at the Kia Forum in Inglewood, California. No spoilers. You can try to figure these out for yourself. The TNT Title Eliminator series of matches will begin with Konosuke Takeshita taking on Penta El Zero Miedo. Hmm. Now that would be one that I would say, and I did not look at the spoilers for this. I was just told what the matches were going to be for the show. On paper, it better be Konosuke Takeshita. You had a match on that pay-per-view for absolutely no reason whatsoever. There was no reason to add John Moxley against Konosuke Takeshita. Why? To give Moxley a win? To give him a win over Takeshita? I mean, Takeshita, of those two guys, probably could have used a, like, a flossy win. So, like, if you wanted to put on a banger, you put should have put on Takeshita beating somebody. But that's just me. Anyway, it's Takeshita against Penta. You can decide on who you think is going to win. Ray Phoenix also wrestles on the show against Isaiah Cassidy. Talked about, like, who the designated guy, but is it Commander, is it Rocky Romero right now? Like, the guy who just appears on every show and puts on a good performance and then takes a big old fat L? Isaiah Cassidy. Always entertaining, takes one hell of an ass whipping, but that's what he does is takes an ass whipping. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.